introduce myself. I used to work at Google. I then ran my startup Future Camp for a few years. I then worked as CTO of a startup. I now work as a part-time CTO with multiple companies at once. Today we are going to talk about inheritance. Inheritance has traditionally been one of the pillars of object-oriented programming. However, its use has declined in modern programming because the uh, implications of inheritance, especially the negative ones, have been recognized more. And nowadays we prefer composition over inheritance. Let me show you what that means. This video writer is basically a wrapper over an iOS class called an asset writer. It's not a subclass. It doesn't say this. The advantage is it's better encapsulated. People cannot access the underlying asset writer and mess with it. And tomorrow, if we want to use some other class instead of asset writer, we can do that. And the users of this class don't know and don't have to change. Whereas if you change the super class of a class, you're breaking the clients. And also this class can have its own class hierarchy independent of this one. Or you can lazily create it. A lot of things you can do, right? Or you can create it after a while, you can destroy it, you can recreate it if needed. So prefer composition to inheritance. You still need to inherit if you're overriding. For example, AV Asset Writer has a function start session that starts the session which is part of video formats, which we don't want to get into. But all we need to know is that in order to write a video file, which is what Asset Writer does, we need to create a session before we start writing. But if you call this function multiple times, it crashes. I found that annoying. So I created this better writer, which just makes sure that it doesn't crash if you call start session multiple times. The second time you call it, it just returns. So that simplifies the rest of the program. In this case, we are overriding start session. So this has to be a subclass. This is a case in which there's no alternative. So the moral of the story is, ne is not to never subclass. It is to subclass only when it is required. Don't inherit to add convenience functions. Some languages like Swift offer extensions so if you look at, it's a good example. Let's look at AV capture device, which is a camera. You can add your own things to the AV capture device class for convenience. So you shouldn't say I want a convenience function, so I'll subclass. And if your language doesn't let you do this, you can always have a global function that takes this as an argument. Again, you don't need a subclass. So if you, uh, if you, let's take this as an example. The camera of a phone, the hardware is fixed in only one orientation. But no matter how you rotate your phone, you get an upright photo. That happens because the orientation is detected and a rotation is applied to the video or the photo to make it look upright, to compensate for the physical rotation. That is what this property returns. It's a computer property or a function. Yeah, it basically does a switch case and returns, right? All the cases. If it's a front camera, the calculation is different because of the angles, depending on the orientation, etc. Because this is a extension property, if I have a if I have a variable like this, whatever the AV capture device is, I can say device dot rotation angle to correct whatever that function is called. 
But suppose your language doesn't offer extensions, you can still do this. Just have a global function that takes it as an argument, not a reason to add a subclass. And the reason why a subclass is the wrong solution to this problem is this rotation angle applies to all AV capture devices. If you have a subclass and you have a rotation angle member in that subclass, it implies that only instances of that subclass can be rotated. But that doesn't make sense. Any camera, any AV capture device can be rotated. The other guideline is if you have a class and it doesn't have any fields, make it a protocol or an interface in Java. So this camera delegate, it has a bunch of method implementations. But it doesn't have any properties, any stored properties, any variables or fields, whatever we call it, right? It just has functions. So this can be a protocol. That way, you know, you don't have class inheritance, one class inheriting from another class, which can be dicey. Inheriting from a protocol is okay. So anytime you have a class without any fields, see if you can make it a protocol or an interface. Another example, this time of a situation where inheritance is appropriate is mode. A camera app has different modes like photo, time lapse, video, etc. Those are represented by a class hierarchy. So you have a light trail video mode, burst mode, time lapse mode, etc. So time lapse mode inherits from some middle layer which inherits from mode. So this is a case where a class hierarchy is needed. And designing a class for inheritance is a conscious decision. You can't inherit from a class that wasn't designed for it. Right? The CPU needs to be designed based on the subclasses and vice versa, which makes it harder. One thing you should take care of is the yo-yo problem. This happens when you have a subclass and you have some function. So let's say I have class A, superclass, and then I have class subclass. Now, the thing that can happen is I have a function subclass dot a, suppose. In its implementation, it calls super dot a and it calls some other function b. But b is overridden, so you come back to subclass again. Let's walk through this. You have a superclass and a subclass. You are invoking some function A on the subclass, which has been overridden. So the subclass version of the implementation is invoked, but at some point it calls super.a. So the superclass code runs, and that code invokes another function B in the superclass, but again, that is overridden. So you come back to B. So you have a yo-yo problem. It's worse like in this code where you have multiple layers of inheritance. So you're jumping back and forth between multiple classes and it's very hard to understand. With inheritance, there are a few types of functions you should think about. One is a function that cannot be overwritten. For that, you should add final, like here. Or let's look in the mode class itself. Do we have any final stuff here? Yes, we do. So that means it can't be overwritten. I think we also have a final function, begin background task here. There is no reason for subclasses to overwrite this. So it makes it more readable. If you remove the final keyword, now when you call begin background task, you have to look at all the subclasses to see whether they have overridden this. So it's harder to understand. And we humans have a very limited ability to 
handle complexity. Beyond a point, we get confused. Our brains throw an exception. So this helps. And it also helps to document to subclasses that you are not supposed to overwrite this. That is, this is better than this. The opposite of final, the very other extreme, is something that must be overridden because a superclass cannot supply an implementation. So this user description property gives you the string that is displayed in the UI for each mode, like time lapse or burst or whatever it may be. This, the base class, the superclass mode cannot possibly supply an implementation of this because it doesn't know what name should be shown in the UI. In some languages, you have an abstract keyword that forces subclasses to implement this and the compiler will throw an exception otherwise. In some languages like Swift, you don't. So you have to go with a dynamic failure detection, but at least have this. Never fail silently. So we have seen two cases a function that cannot be overridden, a function that must be overridden. But there's a middle ground also, a function that must be overridden, but the superclass implementation must be called at some point. So here, if you look at shutter button pressed, it does override the superclass, but at some point it calls the super Code because there's some code here also which is overwritten. So there are three types of functions really when it comes to inheritance. Functions that have to be overridden because the superclass cannot supply an implementation. Functions that must not be overridden and functions that must be overridden and super called. If you look at Apple APIs, some of the functions have comments like, if you override this, you must call the superclass function. You can see how complicated inheritance gets. And for each function, you need to think about which category it falls in. If you don't know, it means you haven't thought it through. You haven't thought through the design of your class hierarchy. And you can think it through after coding it up. That's okay, but you should think about it sometime. This is why inheritance is complex. In some cases, it's the right tool for the job, but make sure it's the right tool for the job before you use it. If you'd like me to work with your team, there's a link in the description.